Hi, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. This is Nitin from Jaran Tech Support Team. Yes. Sir, uh, first of all, I just wanted to like, uh, uh, so, like apologize for the inconvenience cause uh, for yesterday's session. There was some connectivity issue with the Zoom. Don't worry about it. Sorry. Yeah. So we have sorted that. So mm. we have shared the tenant access to all the participants. Mm. And uh, yes, they have the access, sir. Um, okay. Uh, is everyone here? Should we start or should we wait for others? We will wait for a couple of minutes and then we can start by exec 7 AM ISD. Are you Irfan or are you someone, someone else? Uh, sir, this is Nitin here. Oh, okay. Okay. So we can start the session. Right. Hello, guys. Um... Any, any questions from our previous of two sessions? Oh, maybe we just had one session or two sessions. I don't remember. But any any any, um, any questions from the previous sessions that we had about Workday? All right. Um, I thought I'll just give a refresher on a few topics which um, might have been confusing for you since I was just talking. And today I have this white blackboard with me. So today I want to just give you a refresher on the tenants, the different uh, types of tenants that we have. Now you might have already got access to this particular tenant. So this is what a workday, this is this is called as a tenant instance. Okay. I know I haven't got any access to a tenant yet. Well, if you have not received it, you will receive it. Okay. Uh, just check with your train with your uh, training coordinator. But I think most of you might have already received access to the LMS and as well as the uh, tenant. <clears throat> All right, so this is what a workday tenant will look like uh, when you start working as a workday consultant. Now, when it comes to tenants, uh, there are different types of tenants. So as soon as, you know, once a project goes live, uh, assuming most of you will be starting working as a, a consultant on AMS engagements, meaning application management services, once the system goes live, Go live meaning they are started to use Workday. That is the meaning of go, go live. So once they go live, there will be three tenants that will be actually four, four to, there will be five different types of tenants that will be given by Workday by default to every Workday customer. The first tenant will be the production tenant. The second tenant will be the sandbox tenant. Now all now there will be one implementation tenant. So these three tenants will be given by Workday. Additional to this, there are few other tenants that can be that can be purchased by uh, the customers from Workday. It's called as um, sandbox preview. We have customer central. Okay, so production tenant, sandbox tenant, implementation tenant, sandbox preview tenant, and customer central tenant. These are the five different types of tenant that you most, most workday customers will have. Now, what is the difference between these tenants? Now, regardless of which tenant it is, all the tenants will go on a maintenance for a few hours on a Saturday. So Saturday will be a tenant maintenance day. Anytime you log into the tenant on a Saturday, you will see like a message about tenant maintenance. It will write a, it will it will show a page which says that this is a scheduled uh, tenant maintenance activity and the tenants are all under maintenance. And the reason for this is because it's all under cloud. <coughs> so the entire work the ecosystem is maintained on an AWS cloud. AWS meaning Amazon web services cloud so the data centers are somewhere in somewhere so some of them are in north america some of them are in um, uh, different parts of the world so there are multiple data centers for aws spread across different parts of the world 
and Workday has instances in several of these data centers across the world. Now it depends if the customer's base location is in the US, then most of the offices are in US, they will be using the North American data center. But if if the customer is distributed across multiple location, depending upon the tier they, they choose, um, they will have access to Workday uh, from different, I mean, the, the Workday instances will be distributed. There will be copies of instances across data centers. Now, that is one of the reasons we have a scheduled maintenance on Saturday where it will all reconcile the entire data across different uh, data centers and then compile it uh, into one single instance. So that is all something that you really don't want to worry about because this is something that is taken care by work itself. You will never be interrupting or you will never be working on anything related to the scheduled maintenance activities or anything. So you don't have to worry about it just for information purpose that on a Saturday, every, every Saturday, there will be a scheduled tenant maintenance activity. Okay, now the production tenant is the live tenant. So this is the tenant that will be used by the Workday users. So all the Workday users, your, your client will be using this tenant as their main tenant. All the employees will be having access to the this particular tenant. The production tenant so this is a tenant where they will maintain their uh, actual production data like actual employees and uh, any 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 new employees getting hired it will be hired in production directly so this is the production tenant now all the other tenants are for you <clears throat> basically for maintaining the workday system now sandbox tenant will be a copy of production tenant and this will be this will refresh every week meaning on a Saturday, during the tenant maintenance, everything in the production tenant will copy into Sandbox. So every Friday. Now let's suppose today is what? Today is Tuesday. For me, it is Tuesday. So let's say you are working on some config. You got some requirement which you are working in a Sandbox tenant. Now any changes that you make here will not automatically reflect in production. It will not reflect in production because you are not moving those changes. These two tenants are exactly two different instances, but the only way they are related to each other is when during the refresh, the data gets copied from production into sandbox. And this happens every week, meaning every Monday, every Monday you will have production equal to sandbox. And this is a standard across all the clients okay it doesn't matter which client it is a standard across all the clients where the production will be a copy of sandbox the implementation tenant is something that you can this will be initially it will be a copy of production and how often how often this particular tenant will be refreshed with the copy of production will depend upon the client some of them will do on a quarterly basis some clients will do on a monthly basis so in order to refresh this particular tenant with a copy of production, you will have to create a case with Workday. So you will have, you will have a community access, Workday community access, where you will have tenant management as one of the options. And not everyone will have access to the tenant management, only certain employees uh, from the organization. So you will have to be an NSC, meaning named, support contact you will be assigned as an nsc if you are an nsc then you will have the option to raise the refresh request with workday so basically you will go into workday you will create a tenant refresh tenant management case there you will mention the activity which will be tenant refresh you will provide the source the source tenant will be the production tenant if you want to uh, refresh it from production. Uh, the target tenant will be one of the implementation tenant. So you will pro provide the target as implementation. Then you will provide the date and time at on which date and which time slot. So say, let's say between 1 to 2 p.m. you want it to refresh. So between 1 to 2, this particular tenant will not be available. It will be in a maintenance state and it will take about an hour to basically copy everything from production into the implementation. So that is how the implementation tenant works. Now, these are the three tenants that you will be mostly working on. So once you start your job as a workday consultant, uh, 
this these are the three tenants that you will mostly be using now then there are two other tenants one is sandbox preview now sandbox preview is used basically for uh, annual uh, refresh cycles or annual um, release cycles now if you remember i mentioned that in workday workday one of the reasons workday is very popular is because of the release the release upgrades the regular upgrades the features so workday will do a biannual release of new features meaning every every year yearly twice so once in the month of march so we just had a release cycle on march 9th and there are a couple of new features that got added into workday new features new functionalities uh, enhancements to the existing processes changes some changes in the ui the ui got better there are certain uh, certain aspects uh, let's say in time tracking and absence management the way employees book absences there is now a new uh, ui for the calendar the calendar is more concise and easy to use compared to what we were using before so every year every year twice in a year workday releases these updates once in the month of march and now the second one will be sometime in the month of august okay so august and march month we will have a release cycle so during this release cycle what happens is workday will release these new features now when they release it they will not directly release these features into production they will first release all these features into sandbox preview tenant meaning in the preview tenant you will get all the latest features so let's say on march so this year march 9th was the intended production date meaning all the new features that are being released as a part of 2024 release one cycle will be available in production starting march 9th however from february 1st uh, even 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 before february i think it was somewhere around january last week we had all these features so all these features available in sandbox preview now the reason they will first update sandbox preview is because uh, we will still want to test these features right there will be new features there will be few new um, you know some of these features are automatically available meaning you don't need to do any specific configuration for these features to work in your system these are like automatically available for example a change in the ui that is something that is automatically available you don't have to make any changes um, if there is any new fields that are available you don't have to configure those new fields it is automatically available however there are certain other features for which you need a setup set up required features meaning you need to set up workday in a specific way or you have to configure it you have to configure the system in order to use that new feature so there are these two types of features now and some of these features might have an impact to the existing process for example now let i said right um, as this year there was a change in the way absence calendar looks absence calendar looks now this is a change in the ui which which means technically most organizations now even in your current organizations you might have some knowledge articles within your internally let's say um, you when you join the company you might be given a brochure and you might be given certain like how do you book time how do you uh, request absences uh, what is the system that you use to request those absences you might be having some uh, write-up around it like the steps that you have to execute to request an absence or maybe you will have like a some of those screenshots will be there of the system like especially workday customers because not all employees or all the employees who join their company they might be not very familiar with how to use workday so they will have uh, certain step-by-step -step instructions within their internal share points which they the employees can access let's say the employee want to know how to book an absence they can go into that share point they can open that file and see okay these are the steps log into workday with your uh, login details uh, go to this particular menu item select absence and then book your absence and then your manager will approve it and this is where you can see your all the absences these might be the steps that employees will see now along with these steps they will also be providing screenshots now since this is a ui change in the in this particular release uh, all the 
organizations will have to update their internal materials so that is a change it, it impacts the existing process right so this is the reason uh, workday will first release all the features in the preview tenant and once um, and it will give you about a month and a half time to review those features to test those features if some of these features are affecting their existing configuration they can uh, mitigate those problems okay if they want to raise a case with work they want to talk to work they about something about these new features they will have ample amount of time to do that so that is the reason we have sandbox preview so basically a sandbox preview tenant will uh, the sandbox preview tenant will be refreshed with new features twice in a year. So once in the month of uh, January or somewhere in the month of February, basically uh, during release one and then somewhere down the line release two so every year we will have two releases so this year we already completed 2024 release one now somewhere down the line this year we will have 2024 release two now next year we will have 2025 release one then 2025 release two before we used to call it workday 21 workday 22 workday 23 this is how we used to uh, call the release cycles so we had this until workday 35 i think 35 or 36 after 36 workday stopped calling the releases with these numbers and went with these numbers so since we already know that every year there is only two releases we will directly call it as 2024 release 1 2024 release 2 2025 release 1 release 2 2026 this is how how it is going to be going forward okay so that is about the sandbox preview tenant now this doesn't mean that you cannot refresh the sandbox preview tenant you can refresh the sandbox preview tenant uh, anytime in the year however twice in a year it will automatically get refreshed you will not be requesting any refresh it will automatically refresh it with the latest features twice in a year and workday also makes it uh, um, mandatory that all the features will all the new features that is getting uh, released into production it will first be released into sandbox preview all the customers will be notified of these new features or new changes in the sandbox tenant so that they can go and check it out they can get a, a look and feel of how this new feature works how this new setup works and then only it will automatically update the production tenant okay now then the final tenant the customer central tenant now this is basically used for tenant management basically um, if you want to move the changes let's say you have configured some business processes in the implementation tenant you want to move these changes from implementation into sandbox tenant you can use customer central to move those changes from the implementation into sandbox so basically if you have worked on any other erp systems uh, let's say sap if you have some um, experience with sap you have a concept of transports in sap similarly many different erps will have their own way of calling these migrations but this is basically migrating the changes from the lower tenants when i say lower tenant anything that is not production is called as a lower tenant okay so you will be moving the changes from the lower tenant into production tenant or into a different tenant or between tenants you will use customer central for that and there are other uses to customer central um, even during if you are an implementation consultant basically if you are working on implementations you will be you will be mass loading the entire setup data using customer central so th that is done by the implementation consultants at the time of implementation so there are a couple of other these kind of uses for this customer central tenant so it will be it will look a bit different than these tenants uh, now the thing is i don't have um, I don't have a test access to customer central, so I will not be able to show you exactly how this looks like. However, um, during the course, I will take a few screenshots so that, and I will show you those screenshots so you, you will not be <clears throat> oblivious to any of the functionalities. You will know what exactly, how it looks like. However, I don't have a demo tenant for you to show it. All right. Um, 
So this was a, a general recap from the previous session where I spoke about tenant management. Some of you might have got confused. Uh, what exactly is a tenant? Why, why, what is sandbox? What is implementation? I hope now you might have got a better understanding of what exactly um, these different tenants are and why do we need these different types of tenant? Any questions? Yes. Yes, Jansi. Yes, Nikhil. Uh, can you please explain the difference between sandbox and the implementation with uh, some more examples and clearly? Because I'm getting confused. Like, uh, the, I mean, like the changes sometimes we do in the sandbox uh, that will be implemented in the production every week, right? And also, like, when uh... I'll explain. I explain. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'll just uh, let's take production and sandbox okay now let's say you you hired an employee in production okay i'm going to hire jansi in the company so jansi got hired on a monday morning or maybe on a sunday because as of saturday you will have uh, the refresh completed and as of sunday morning what you will have is in the sandbox, sandbox will have an exact copy of production. So if Jansi got hired in production, you will also see the same transaction in sandbox because production and sand sandbox is a copy of production. So it, it's a one way street from, from production, the data will go into sandbox. From sandbox, the data will not automatically go into production. You have to move it deliberately you have to move it. It will not automatically go. However, the data from sandbox, from production into sandbox will automatically move. So let's say you hired someone called Rajiv in this tenant. It will not automatically hire someone in production as well. It will not. Because you will have to, you have to hire that person in production itself. And as of Monday, then it will move. So let's say you you hired Jansi um, last week, and this week you will see that that particular transaction is there. Now this hap this is on Monday. Let's suppose, or as of as of Monday, you're seeing the same copy. Let's say between Monday to Friday, you have hired 50 more employees. Those 50 employees will not be in production for that week. The next week, as of Monday again, you will see that. You have these 50 employees plus Jansi here. You'll also see 50 employees plus Jansi here because on a Saturday, it went on a maintenance and during Saturday, there is a refresh that happened. Refresh meaning, again, all the data from production is moved into sandbox. Does that, does that clarify your question? Yes, uh, yes, Nikhil. Uh, but I have one more question in implementation. So like, uh, I want to know, uh, is it like, is implementation is a testing module or is uh, it is only done? I mean, like it is it's, only... it's a, it's, it's a test tenant. It's the name of the tenant is implementation tenant. It's not just for implementations. The name is called as implementation. This is by default, you will have one implementation tenant. Customers can buy n number of implementation tenants. So some of my customers, they have like five implementation tenants. Those five implementation tenants, they will not refresh every time. You have to request for refresh. So they they will use these implementation tenants sometimes for different projects. Companies who have big uh, big companies uh, who have multiple projects running simultaneously, they they might be using different tenants for different purposes. Maybe there is a new project that is going on. Uh, they will use one of these tenants. Uh, they will refresh one of these tenants with production and then they will configure the entire project in that tenant and they will test it there and then they will move those config to production so different companies have different way of using the tenants some companies will just have one implementation some companies might have two or three uh, the most common that i have seen is like companies uh, who have ample budgets like uh, companies who have money and budget uh, they usually have like at least three implementation tenants uh, but then i have seen some companies like uh, some of them like apple um, they, they have like what six seven they have a lot of money 
Alex have any implementation term. They just uh, subscribe to those minute and even if they are using or not using, they they sometimes uh, use uh, have some of these tenants uh, as a backup. Uh, at times, if they want to use it for whatever purpose. So uh, different companies have different way of using Workday, uh, but then Workday has these these are the features and this is why they use implementation tenant. All right, uh, let's. Also, whatever the changes that we do regularly, that will be done in the sandbox, and that and the changes that will be reflected in the production. Uh, at the end you, of the week, you right? have to move it in whatever you do in lower tenant will not automatically update in production. You will understand it as we speak more about Workday. So don't get hung up on just these concepts. There is a lot more to learn in Workday. Uh, and you will you will get more understanding as and when we start exploring Workday more. Okay. So don't just get confused by these terms. This is some basic terminology. I thought you should be aware of this before we move ahead and uh, uh, talk about other things. All right. Now let me log into Workday. So oh, let me log in again. Okay, so I hope everyone are able to see the Workday screen. Once you log into Workday, this is how the screen looks like. Now, if you have noticed, I logged into Workday from a browser, meaning you just need a laptop with a browser or a desktop with a browser and you can log into Workday. I have even logged into Workday using my mobile browsers. So Workday is very intuitive that way you it's, it's, it's entirely cloud-based you don't need uh, a specific server or any any other equipment in in your office you just need a browser uh, to log into workday and then you can set up your entire company uh, hr processes and finance processes payroll everything you can set up within this particular workday system now if you look here this is the menu meaning this will have some of the most used apps. Uh, these are called as worklets and employees will be able to use these apps. So this is like a quick menu for the employees. They can just log into Workday and they can uh, easily go through some of these items. Now, not all employees will be able to see each and everything. Since I am I'm like an admin, I will have a lot more access uh, in Workday when compared to employees who will be having some restricted access. They will not be having the entire access. Okay, and if I go to the right here, you will see there are uh, three, there are four icons here. The first one is, this is the assistant, Workday assistant. Now some companies, Workday does have like a Workday assistant. This is like a robot. Um, employees can directly uh, uh, request uh, certain transactions directly. Uh, they If they want to find certain information, they can directly ask uh, directly in this assistant. Some companies use, most companies use Workday assistant. Um, uh, managers can, uh, easily uh, do certain transactions for their employees directly from the assistant. They can just uh, click on this Workday Assistant and they can uh, type in here some of the requests. And this is like an AI platform for Workday, which they are constantly improving and developing. The next icon that you see here are notifications. So any employee notifications that you will, that the worker or the any the workday users uh, will receive will be f uh, will be over here so these notifications can be uh, anything like you see there is a happy birthday notification there is a birthday for some of one of the employee so there is a, a birthday notification over here so um finance reports notifications so they, these are different workday notifications in this particular um, for my profile you are seeing like 17 notifications and not everyone will be receiving like 17 notifications um it depends upon the the type of employee now in this particular tenant I am set up as an admin, so I might be getting a lot of other notifications, like if an employee is hired, a new employee is hired, I will get a notification saying that, hey, there is a new employee who got hired, maybe uh, uh, check, out, check out some of their uh, payroll and uh, get those things set up so you can come you can give give out that particular communication to the admins um if a new employee is hired maybe their manager also need to be notified that hey there is a new person who will be joining your team the hr should be notified the hr partners hey, there is a new person who is joining this particular team maybe uh, uh meet with them so all these notifications uh, about the different business processes 
if there is a new report available so if you have executed a report that report might be available uh, if that report is now processed and available for use you will see a notification here so you can set up um, different notifications in workday all these notifications are again uh, which can be set up from the business process which we will discuss in some of these sessions for now just understand that this is the notification now we have another item called as my task so if you are required to perform a certain task uh, in workday where you have to complete an action all those tasks will be available over here now you see that there are a lot of tasks like there is a higher task that is pending um, and there are a lot of other tasks in the system so all the activity or any action item that is pending on you will be available in the my task box now here you can filter by different you have a lot of filters so this is like a uh, basically like your email inbox when you have an email inbox if you want to search for a specific mail if you want to search for a for a, a, a mail from a specific person you will type it in this search item right similarly you can search for certain type of task that is waiting on you here there is uh, saved searches here basically if you want to uh, save a particular type of search and you can save those searches you can have filters active filters you can manage those filters like all to do tasks you will see all the to do task over here if you want to see um, any specific uh, type of task or any specific um, you can you can save those filters and view it so this is not like super important but this is for you to understand basically you will always end up using all items where you will see all the tasks that are currently available over here you can also bulk approve certain transactions if you if you have access to do it for example here you can see that there are seven items that are awaiting for me for a bulk approval i can click ok and i can uh, probably bulk approve some of these uh, transactions over here it is giving some error so that is fine so this is called as a my task inbox here is your profile so basically um, an employee's profile um, you can you can view your profile if i click on view profile it will show my own profile so um, in this tenant i am set up as a senior manager ashley james and this is my summary so it will show my some of the details like what is my job what is my business title who is my manager okay what is my location what is my job profile, my title, my management level, if I'm a full-time or a part-time, what is my uh, location, the shift, the hire date, the original hire date, okay? So some of these information we will we'll discuss in the future, but for now, just try to uh, get a basic understanding of, okay, this is what it looks like. Um, you will see uh, if I go to the, you can move around different tabs like this, like you can go to the overview tab, you can go to the job tab, and it will give you a uh, different details about the worker. Like what are the different uh, transactions that has happened on the worker? There is a legal name change. So these are different uh, business processes that were executed for this worker. We will discuss about business process in the future, but for now, just understand that they can, we can go through the worker tabs like this. We can navigate different tabs and different tabs will give you different information like i can go to the job details over here okay oh. Okay, you can go to the job details over here. You can check out the organizations that are assigned to work day. Okay, and compensation details. What is the current uh, employees? This employee's compensation. What is this employee paid? So you you will be able to see a lot of these details uh, in this particular uh, in, by navigating these tabs. If you click here, it will take you back to the home page. This is the home page of work day. So this is the work day home page. Okay. And here, additionally, if I go, you can go to my account where you will be able to change your password. You can change your preferences. Basically, Workday has a lot of certain preferences that you can update for yourself, like what is your language, what is your preferred display language, and Workday supports a lot of languages over here. So if you if you are from a specific country, let's say you only speak Italian or you only speak uh, Spanish, uh, you can um, select. Um, you can select Espanol and it will 
it will the, the entire workday tenant will now be in espanol it will be in spanish so workday supports multiple languages as well you can uh, select the preferred uh, display language you can also prefer the type of clock that you want within the tenant if you want a 12 hour clock or a 24 hour clock uh, what is the default currency that you want to see if you want to use usd as a default currency or if you want to use inr as a default currency and search preferences and these are the notifications so what kind of notifications you want to receive if you want to receive all types of notifications or only a certain uh, type of notifications you can opt in you can opt out so there are a lot of other uh, uh, options available uh, within your uh, profile management um, you have something called as sitemap now it, this this particular option might not be available for all the employees uh, not all employees will have access to sitemap but if you have if if you when you are working if you have access to sitemap this will basically give you the list of all the tasks and reports that you have access to so now that i have executed in sitemap let it let that report execute so it's a, it's a type of report it will give you the list of all the accesses um, and all the tasks that are available for you to execute so you can see these are the different reports i have these are the different tasks that i can uh, that i can execute and these are different functional areas so for each of these areas like if i go to let me scroll down and let's say compensation let's say if i go to compensation you will see these are the number of there are like number of compensation reports that you can use uh, there are a lot of compensation tasks that you can uh, execute for example you can directly click on create calculated plan and it will directly open that particular task for you so you can if you don't remember the task exactly uh, you can easily go to the sitemap and then you can search for that particular task from the sitemap now suppose you don't have access to sitemap in workday you will able you'll be able to easily search for the task in this search bar so let's say um you want to create a specific um you, you want to create like a salary plan for an employee you, you you don't have to really think about what is the exact task name you just have to type create salary and workday will automatically give you the different tasks that are available and there is you can see that there are three tasks and workday by default will show you the most um, most matching three tasks however you can click on view more and it will give you a full list of tasks as well as the reports that start with create self now you can see there are only three three uh, tasks that are available for create salary and then there is one report something so anything that has a salary it is automatically getting pulled here you don't even have to type the entire task here for example you just need to type the three first three letters and workday will automatically identify what kind of task it might the user might be requesting for for example uh, instead of writing create salary i might just put cre sal it will still understand that i might be uh, trying to create a salary or i might be trying to create a sales item or I might be creating a period salary plan. So whatever matches and all that matches, Workday will automatically show in this particular search reports. So one of the benefit of this is you don't have to really um, uh, have things by heart. I mean, you don't have to remember everything. You just need to you just need to remember what that particular term might be called, and then you will be able to easily search for that item in Workday. All right. Okay, um, Okay. now let us talk about, let us talk a bit about uh, what are some of the different modules in Workday. I, I remember we already spoke about this, but again, it was more about, I was just showing you different slides and uh, talking about it. Um, now, we do have uh, multiple uh, modules that are available in Workday, like we have HCM, we have, um, so these are the different modules that we have. Uh, HCM is the core module, meaning everyone who is implementing Workday will have to, uh, by sure, implement HCM. And then you have an additional module called Compensation, which is also a very important module, meaning uh, all customers who are implementing Workday should implement HCM as well as 
compensation module. Now, if they don't want to use Workday's compensation, they will still have to implement a basic Workday compensation for uh, a basic Workday compensation uh, module with some placeholders, but they will still have to use HCM as well as compensation uh, as uh, mandatory modules in Workday. Okay. Now, other than HCM compensation, there are other modules as well, which which is like optional. I mean, um, you can choose to use those modules or you don't, if you don't want to use those modules, you don't have to use it. But there are different other modules like we have, uh, we have recruitment. We have Workday recruitment. We have Workday time tracking. We have absence management. We have payroll, we have benefits, we have advanced compensation, we have finance, okay? So like this, we have few more modules that are available in Workday. Now, some it is up to the client to choose, like if they want to use a specific module, they can choose to use that module. If they don't want to use that module, they don't have to use it. So some clients might want, might want to, let's say they went live with Workday. So they went live in, let's say 2000, um, uh, suppose they went live three years ago, somewhere in 2000, uh, uh, 2020, they went live. Okay, so from 2020 until now, they have been using compensation and HCM. Now they decided to, okay, let's let's also start using advanced compensation. So the customer can purchase, subscribe for advanced compensation, and then they can use all those features and all those capabilities that is offered by advanced compensation. Similarly, they can also start using uh, recruitment. They can start using time tracking. So these modules are, again, like it's not mandatory, but if you want to choose, you can subs the, the customer can subscribe to these modules and start uh, using these modules. Now, you some of you asked me like, um, do will you be working on an implementation always, or it will be just implementation or just support? So basically, at the time, the very first time the workday is implemented, basically the employee is not or sorry, the the company is not currently using Workday and they are moving into Workday for the very first time. At that time, they will it will be an implementation. <clears throat> okay, so for this, you might require a certification. And this is something like Workday mandates that all implementations, all Workday implementation will only be, be done by certified consultants. So only certified consultants will be able to do implementation. The reason being, uh, only if you are a certified, only if you are certified, you will be getting access to an implement. You will be getting implementer access. This is like uh, unconstrained tenant-wide access. There will not be any restrictions uh, for an implementer, and they will be able to access every single thing in work there. Okay. Um, now, once the system goes live, after that, any kind of implement, any kind of uh, additional enhancement that comes. For example, in these cases, like I said, the client was uh, live with uh, Workday in the year 2020, and at that time, they were only having uh, HCM and compensation. Now they are moving, they are going to add these other modules as well. I mean, they decided that, okay, now we have budget and uh, we are seeing the positive benefits of using Workday as our HR system. We would like to integrate all our other modules. So right now they might be using a different software for recruitment. They might be using a different software for payroll. They might be using a different software to handle benefits. Now they decided that, okay, from now onwards, uh, for the next, in the next two years, we would like to bring all all these different third-party systems, uh, we want to sunset or retire all these third-party systems and start using Workday as our core HR system. Basically, move um, move from those third-party softwares and start using Workday because everything will be within a one single system. It will be better. There will be better reporting. And again, different modules speak to each other, right? For example, 
uh, if you if you are going to use recruitment, you will have to first create a position. So positions will be created in HCM, and then you will post those uh, new vacancies into a recruitment, and recruitment will post it in the career sites. So there is some there is some interlink between different uh, modules. For example, based on the time tracking, uh, let's say you are going to be paying the employee based on the number of hours they work. So there should be some link between uh, time tracking as well as uh, workday payroll. So uh, based on the number of hours they work, so let's suppose they work for um, uh, 180 hours that particular month. This particular data should be fed from time tracking and it should go into uh, the payroll as well. So there is some links always between different modules from benefits to payroll. If there are any insurance reductions, benefit reduction. Benefits are basically, um, you know, healthcare plans like in your companies, you will be provided some kind of benefits, right? Insurance plans. And for that, you will be paying like a premium. Now, most companies, they will include it as a, a free benefit. Now, technically, it is not free. You are still paying for that. However, it is not like a deduction that happens from your salary. However, if apart from the free tier, like um, now most companies, they, they give like a, a three, five lakh insurance for the employees and up to three lakhs for their uh, parents and spouse and children. However, there can be a top up where you can in, you can um make it like 10 lakhs cover so for this 10 lakhs you are required to pay let's say uh 25000 additional uh, per year this 25000 deduction should go into payroll right so these kind of deductions will uh need to move into payroll these kind of payment details should go into payroll let's say there is an un unpaid time off so employment on a, a sabbatical leave where it is an unpaid time off this particular data should also go into payroll so that Workday knows that hey, this person is on unpaid time off. So for this particular month, there should not be any uh, salary that has to be paid for this particular, uh, for a particular employee. So Workday has uh, different modules. They speak to each other. There is some kind of a relation. What you configure in one module can have some potential effects in other modules as well. Now they speak with each other. So, and again, this is good thing because everything is integrated within Workday. Now, whenever this happens, now when I when I say this happens, basically once the client is live on one or two of the modules and they want to bring in maybe an additional module, maybe they are live on many other modules and but they are not using time tracking absence. They want to implement time tracking absence. That can still be implemented even though it is a fresh implementation, meaning uh, those modules need to be freshly implemented. Uh, it can be done by the support consultants and as a phase X project. We call it as phase X implementation. So it is an implementation, but you don't have to be an implementer or you don't have to be certified to work on these kind of projects. Now, these are the type of projects that are currently flooded in the market, meaning the customer is already using Workday from the past few years. Now they want to implement a new module or they want to upgrade or update their existing processes. So maybe at the time they implemented work, they, they, they implemented based on their current scenarios and current um, business objectives and current uh, business processes. And uh, now after three years, they are seeing that there are a lot of changes that they want to potentially do because now they have started using Workday. They are recognizing that, hey, there are certain things that we would like to change in the system. And for that, we might need uh, some additional consultants who can uh, configure it for us. Now, that is uh, a phase X project. So these kind of projects are a lot in the market. And you can potentially, even though you have, you might not be initially working on an implementation project, uh, you can still be getting a similar type of experience working on these kind of projects. Any questions here? Hey, Nikhil, right. one question with uh, from my one. So I've seen a lot of modules here, but uh, I don't see any integration module. I know the purpose of integration module in this. It's All right. A... Um, I did not mention integration here. Okay, so my bad. Again, integration is something. So these are all called. Um, okay, let me talk about that as well. So primarily, there are two two work streams. So when when you are uh, when you say you are a workday consultant, uh, you will either be a functional consultant, or you will be a technical consultant. 
So functional consultants are the consultants who will be working on functional modules like the functional modules are these modules, whatever I explained here. These are all functional modules. Now, let us back up a little and uh, think of a time that I explained. Um, 20 in the month in the year 2020, the customer was using only HCM and compensation ISO, I told, right? They were not using any other modules. Between 2020 to 2023 or 2024, uh, they were they still have to run their payroll. They still have to run their absence and time tracking. So let's say for payroll, um, they might be using ADP payroll. Hmm? For uh, time tracking, let's suppose they are using Kronos. Kronos is a time tracking software. For benefits, they have some kind of a third party, uh, third party benefits uh, system, third party benefits provider. We have uh, for different for recruitment they might be using um uh, there is there are multiple recruiting systems out there maybe they are using a uh, greenhouse for recruitment so like this they are not using all the products that are in workday however you still need certain data from workday like let's say you hired a new employee in workday and that employee will will require access to Kronos, right? So you might want to integrate Workday with Kronos so that uh, all the employees are. So let's say a new employee has hired as a part-time employee. You should, the Kronos should know that there is a new employee who is part-time so that it will appropriately calculate the time for the employee, the type of payment that needs to be done. Uh, this has to be also integrated with payroll so that payroll knows that, hey, there is a new employee and from now on, from this month, we also have to pay for this new employee. So all this kind of work, uh, integrating with the third party system is done by the technical consultants. They will specifically be working on integrating workday with third party systems and functional consultants will be working on configuring the functional modules in workday. Now, if you ask me about the scope, every, every company will have some kind of an integration. Every project will have a requirement for integration consultants. So this is both a great, um, great i mean there is there is nothing like functional is good and technical is not good or technical is great and functional is not good both of their modules have their own requirements and own scope uh, um, across industries and across uh, opportunities are similar however i have not seen i have seen very less people who are both functional and technical uh, meaning you might be working more as a functional consultant less as a technical or either less as a or more as a technical consultant and less as a functional. But I have not seen a lot of consultants or I have not personally met anyone who is like a pro in functional and a pro in technical. I mean, you will, you, you, there might be people out there, uh, but you will see very less population out there who will be doing both because it is um, uh, from a work perspective, you'll be working what? You know, 40 hours or maybe at max 60 hours in a week you will be either be focusing more on the functional side of things or you will be focused on the technical side of things unless you are like a manager or a senior level you might be overlooking things from both functional and technical perspective but from a hands-on perspective you might not be uh, hands-on on both uh, now the reason i'm explaining this to you is i have seen a lot of lot of students like you uh, who complete their trainings and they will go ahead and start uh, posting their resume saying that I am a techno functional consultant they will they will they will uh, apply for uh, in their resume they will put that they are a techno functional consultant now the moment you tell that uh, if it's a interviewer like me uh, the moment I read the statement I know that you are a fake consultant <clears throat> So I would, uh, I would really, and right now, because you are currently learning uh, HCM functional, so you are a functional consultant. You will always say that you are a functional consultant. You will not say you are a technical consultant. You might, you will, you will still learn certain integrations like inbound integrations, but that doesn't make you a, an integrations consultant. It, you will, that doesn't make you a techno functional. You will be a functional consultant, and that is how you will market or float your resumes in the market as a functional consultant. Anyway, that is about uh, integrations. I hope that clarified your query on integrations. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Now the next thing is uh, security. Now security is one of the important modules in Workday, and every 
you need to implement security because it will it is what controls the access now there are different personas in work there right in a, in a, in, a, in a company there will be um, there will be the senior management there will be like a senior management there will be certain other personas let me just draw this out like this Okay, so let's let's take these four personas. Let's say this is like the leadership. Okay, this is the the HR HRIS team, basically HR technology team. Uh, you have now the middle management like managers, and then you have employees. <clears throat> now the type of access each of these parties have in work they will be different. The employees will only have access to their personal information. Basically, whatever data they should be seeing for their personal level, they won't be able to see other employee data. I mean, they should technically not be seeing the other employee data. You should not be seeing, uh, let's say, the uh, the contact details or the personal address of this employee. You should not be seeing the compensation details of this employee, right? However, let's say the manager for both of these employees, A and B, is M. Okay, let's say manager M and he is the manager for both of these employees. This manager should should have access to some personal details. Maybe they, the manager need the access to contact details of the employee. Maybe this manager should have access to the compensation details, like what is this employee salary and what is this employee salary. He will have access to the salary details of their employees. So managers might have a different level of access. The HRIS team, they will have access to the salary details of all these employees. So managers and also the leadership, because they are the HR team, they manage uh, the compensation for all the employees they manage the payroll so they should be aware of what is the compensation or what are what are some of the benefits that are paid to these employees so they will have a different level of access and the leadership will have a different they will be having access to some of the details of the entire organization now how will you control these different accesses within workday it is all controlled using one module called as a security module so security module will determine who will have access to what which employee will have which level of access so if this if employee if this person is a user what kind of access does that person have if this person is a manager what kind of access should this person have now you should also have a way of automating these things because you cannot um, specify every time you are hiring an employee you cannot determine that okay these are the level of accesses that we have to give some of these systems need to be automated meaning as soon as an employee is hired based on his current level based on his current uh, position these accesses should be automatically assigned the employee should be automatically given access if the employee is moving from a specific let's say the employee is current today a manager from manager position that employee is now moving to an individual contributor role where that employee is not actually leading a team so that employee should not have access to any employees other comp or any other data because that person is an individual contributor so it should automatically revoke access it should automatically grant access so all that is handled by the security module we will be touching upon some parts of security during the our hcm discussions however workday security is in itself a different functional area where we have separate consultants will be handling uh, the security for workday uh, however, you should still have some understanding of some of the basic security concepts, like how security is uh, set up in Workday. What if you if you have to if you are not having access to certain things, but you need access, you might be still requesting uh, the security admin for that access. But you should know as a consultant, you should know where exactly to look for uh, in Workday for that particular items. And they, okay, I don't have access to this particular detail in Workday, and this is where you'll have to access me security now we will be discussing all these concepts in the future but um, that is uh, this is basically what i wanted to talk about like a, an overview of how security is handled and i just touched upon a very high level about workday security just gave you a glimpse of hey we also have something called as security in workday and that is uh, basically if i just go through some of these details you will uh, this is what it basically speaks about when it says work the security architect so i just wanted to give you some understanding about um, uh, 
why do we even need uh, a security module in Workday? All right. So basically, that 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 is about the Workday fundamentals. So we we spoke about the origin story of Workday, um, and we spoke about the tenant management in Workday. We spoke about the business organogram, like what is the organization structure, how does it look like, and uh, why, why do we need an organogram? Like, what is the business organization structure? Then we spoke about um, the implementation plan. Okay, let us uh, revisit this unit four now. Uh, we also spoke about the uh, security basics, like an overview of security. Let me give you um, some more refresher on the work, the implementation methodology. So this entire fundamental topics, um, there is, I mean, we will not be doing any config per se in Workday. This is just to give you a fundamental understanding of what Workday is and what we will be learning. So today we'll complete this particular Workday fundamentals. And we will also be discussing about what I will be teaching you in the next few weeks on Workday HCM. So this is where we'll talk about uh, the configurations. We'll talk about um, what kind of, uh, what different, um, because there are different modules here. It's not just HCM. You, you will also see that uh, we are touching a bit on compensation. We are also touching a bit on uh, security. We are also touching uh, a bit of reporting here. So there is, you see here, reporting unit eight. We'll be touching upon different uh, topics here. Uh, so I'll be, um, I'll be giving you an overview of what we will be and how I'll be covering these uh, different uh, units uh, uh, throughout our course. Okay, so let us talk about the Workday implementation methodology. So when when you are, let's say you are working as an implementation consultant and you are going to implement Workday for a customer, uh, there are certain phases in which you will implement uh, Workday. So the first phase is called as a uh, design. We call it a design sessions. So it start with it starts with design sessions and then after the design sessions you will have architect sessions you'll have architect review then you have a uh, setup or configuration phase then you have unit test uat migrations or you call it as conversions and go live okay so in during the design sessions this is where you will go to the customer um, the customer has showed interest in implementing workday now you'll be going as a consultant uh, to the customer and then you will be giving them an overview of different modules in workday so it will be similar to a session that i am taking right now for you but it will be more on a high level and focused on different uh, areas like uh, what are the different types of business processes that are available like how will you what what are some of the um, uh, transactions like if you want to hire an employee how does that look like if you want to promote a worker uh, transfer a worker or, or change the location for a worker how does it look like what is a business process what are some of the what are some of the options to configure like if you need approvals if you need someone else to review who can initiate so those kind of details you will discuss during the design sessions and design sessions will happen for every module so let's say the customer is interested in implementing hcm compensation time absence and recruitment you will you will be uh, having different separate sessions for hcm separate sessions for recruitment separate sessions for compensation and this will happen with the uh, the relevant uh, stakeholders in the company so if it's a big company, they will be having a different team for compensation, which handles only the compensation for that particular company. There will be a different team that handles only the recruitment activities. So there will be a talent acquisition specialist. There will be a talent acquisition uh, lead in that company who will only work and deal with the uh, hiring and uh, the acquisition of talent, basically like uh, attracting talent and retaining this talent. So there will be different verticals in the different departments within the organization and you will be having these design sessions with uh, these different um, stakeholders in the company so 
if you are an hcm consultant you will be working with the hr uh, people the hr partners you'll be discussing like hey these are the features in workday and this is uh, this is what is available and these are some of the options that are available and for each of these workday provides design workbooks so these are the templates that uh, that can be downloaded from community workday uh, again every year when there is a release if there is some additional things that they need to add they will keep on updating these design workbooks in the community you can download this from the community so as if you are working as an implementation consultant yeah and even if you are not working as an implementation as soon as if you are working as a workday consultant you will be having access to the workday uh, community and if you are an implementation consultant you will have uh, some additional access within the workday community where you will be able to download these design workbooks now these design workbooks are like excel 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 sheets um, excel files with different sheets and each sheet will have different columns and rows of data so basically it will guide the customer hey this is where you will enter all your employee information like the employee name the first name the last name their personal details there so they, they, there will be a separate um, way where you will collect those configurations about the the employee you have separate design workbooks where you will con where you will um, um where you will collect the configuration data let's say uh, this is a business process and these are different steps that are required in our business process uh, so you will have it all documented in these design workbooks so design sessions are where you will have these discussions with the customer about the different requirements and different processes that are available in workday and during these design sessions the <clears throat> the customer will get a glimpse about what are the different features that are available what are different options that are available in workday which they can uh, actually go through so they they will decide hey these are some of the features that we want to use these are some of the features we we don't want to use these are some of the features maybe it is good to have but we don't want to configure let it be as it is so that way you will that that is all about the design session the second phase is the architect phase the architect phase is where the customer will start filling those design workbooks so here you will explain the design workbook and the workday system and in the architect phase they will start filling the data into these design workbooks so basically the customers will start entering uh, what is the business process that they want to have what you know how many approvals they need to have how many steps they need to execute to complete a, a, a particular transaction in workday like a higher transaction transaction or a transfer or uh, when an employee books a leave who all should uh, approve those leave if a manager books the leave who, who should that approval go to uh, should uh, what type of uh, different uh, compensation should be available to the worker what kind of elements uh, allowances should be given to the worker all these details will be filled by the customers during the architect phase so once the uh, customers have completed uh, entering all these details then there will be an architect review phase where uh, you will be you will be reviewing these data from the customer so customers will complete this particular workbook and then they will send it to you then you will review these requirements along with the customer to finalize the uh, workbook so basically this is where the requirements gathering will be finalized okay so this phase here these two phases is a requirement gathering phase this is a phase you will be collecting all the requirements from the customer basically what they want to implement what features they want to use how they want to customize those features based on whatever customization abilities that we that are available within workday so architect phase and architect review phase is that now once these two phases are complete now once you have all the requirements gathered and all the all the requirements finalized it will go to configuration phase now the configuration phase might happen in multiple sprints so a sprint may be if i if you are not aware of what exactly a sprint is uh, this is the latest agile uh, methodology that is used by a lot of companies and a lot of companies see a lot of benefit in using sprint uh, uh, agile um, agile way of uh, implementing project so basically sprints will be uh, it can be a two week sprint or it can be a three week sprint so basically what they do is uh, whatever design whatever requirements that were finalized during the uh, the design phase or basically during the architect phase and architect review phase those requirements will be now divided into different task so you will have task 1 task 2 task 3 so basically the task will outline the requirements that were gathered so 
you, if you if you if say that you want to configure um, ten, po you you need hundred positions, you need uh, two hundred and fifty job profiles, uh, you need these many supervisory organizations, you need these many cost centers, these many companies. So all that will be divided into multiple task in workday so let's say you have a total list of uh, let's say 500 tasks that needs to be completed then this is like a very low low ball i'm just lowballing the number 500 generally it might can go up to more than 1000 uh, but let's say you have 500 tasks that needs to be completed in order to complete the entire configuration now these 500 tasks will be estimated like okay to complete these 500 tasks how many what is the amount of time that you need uh, do you need like uh, seven months or eight months to just complete the configuration okay let's suppose you have eight months eight months will be divided into weeks so let's say each month have four four weeks so eight into four so that is equal to 32 weeks now we will decide that hey uh, are we going to do this in like two week sprints or three week sprints let's suppose um, the um, the management and this is done by the scrum master again you might not be involved in these kind of planning unless you are a, a scrum master or you are a solution architect so basically if you once you you rise up to a level of a solution architect these are some of the activities that you will be very much involved in uh, however otherwise if you are not Okay. So these might be some of the activities that you will be more involved in where it, uh, you will be deciding how long the project should be, how many, how, how many, what should be the duration of uh, configuration, like you might need eight months to configure this or you might need uh, 12 months to configure this configure when i say configure it's not just configuring you will be configuring it and then you will also be unit testing that entire config. So let's suppose uh, we determine that to complete this 500 task we need eight months so eight months will be 32 weeks okay now this 32 weeks let's suppose we are going to do a two week sprint so this will be divided by two so basically you will be doing it in like 16 sprints right so you will be dividing this entire uh, 500 task into 16 sprints now each sprint you will complete let's say uh, 500 tasks divided by 16 now you will determine in this first in sprint one how many tasks you will be completing let's say you'll be completing like 12 or 15 tasks so when i when i say complete these tasks you will be configuring those tasks and you'll also be unit testing those tasks so you will basically uh, every sprint you will configure something you will test it and then you will you will sign off on that particular config now every sprint you will slowly knock off you will slowly knock down some of those tasks from the requirements and by the end of 16 sprints you should be having the all the configurations completed and unit tested so basically that is the configuration phase configuration and unit testing where you will where you will configure all the where you will configure every uh, all the uh, tasks available all, one second guys sorry about that yeah so during this phase you will be completing the configurations of uh, all the requirements that were finalized during the requirement phase once the configurations are completed and unit tested you will be asking the customers to start you uh, do completing the uat testing so during this phase uh, for UAT testing, uh, there will be certain scenarios the customers will be testing. Like, uh, so let's say the customers gave a specific business process that need to be executed when you are transferring the worker. Uh, the customer will have specific scenarios around that. So let's say as a manager, you will initiate a specific transaction and, and you will uh, make sure that, okay, this, uh, this particular approval is happening or this particular review is happening. So you will have multiple uh, scenarios configured uh, for testing so let's say for there are 500 uh, things that were configured and then you have uh, 800 scenarios that needs to be tested and signed off by the uh, customer 
then you determine to complete this uh, 800 uh, scenarios you might need let's say for, uh, three months to complete this entire testing now there will be like 10 people who will be working simultaneously uh, to test uh, different scenarios and again this will also be part of the sprint plan so this is the unit uad testing where you uh, the customer will be doing the testing um, so this is called as a user acceptance testing now during the uad testing there might be certain issues they have found so all that issues will again go into the issue log so they will put it in the issue log where this issue log will be revisited by the uh, functional consultant like you uh, will be looking at the issue log and then they will start uh, they will start fixing those issues and then again uh, this this cycle will happen in this way so you know during the uat any any issues will be logged and then issues will be so solved and again they will uh, retest and then slowly let's say there were uh, 500 or 600 issues that were reported and slowly the day the issues will become zero so there are zero issues now uh, this is the day they will say that okay now the uad testing is completed now let us start uh, moving migrating the config so basically all the worker data will now be uh, will have to be put into the tenant so that is called as a convergence phase where you will so now you have the entire setup so you have the configurations done now you need to start migrating the employee data so customer is already let's say the customer has been using sap now they are migrating into workday now this particular customer has 10000 employees in their company now you have to migrate all the data of these 10000 employees from from this particular system to the workday system and this is done by the convergence consultant usually it is done by the convergence consultant however if you 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 can also do it if you have a good understanding of how eibs work this is where eib are used for uh, mass loading of the data so during the convergence phase uh, you will get this particular data from the client so the, the customer it is a customer's responsibility to download and extract the reports and data from the sap system and provide it to you in in those specific uh, workbook templates and it is your responsibility to take this data and then load it into workday so this is this in during this phase you will be basically loading all this um, employee level data from their sap system or their any legacy third party legacy erp system into the workday system now once the data migrations are completed um, the, again there will be one round of validation where um, the customer will uh, download all these validation reports from from the tenant and then they will validate it against their existing conf existing data so they will see that okay these employee data whatever is loaded in workday is matching what we currently have in our sap tenant now once that is finalized uh, there will be da reviews da reviews are basically called as delivery assurance reviews this will be done by workday so workday once you say that hey we have configured our tenant we are ready for to go live now at this point workday will come and look at your configuration and then they will give a delivery assurance certificate so basically delivery assurance is where workday will look at your config and there are certain standards that are followed by workday basically um, workday will workday says that okay if you are going to implement this particular functionality this is uh, this is how you have to implement it this is a there is a specific uh, standard uh, that you have to follow when implementing it however you can also customize that and you can deviate from the standard based on your use case however workday during the delivery assurance they will flag these things saying that hey this is something that you have configured which is not following our standard so in the future if there is something that breaks and something that doesn't work you will not come to us and sue us saying that hey we brought you we we purchased your product now it is not working yeah so this is basically like an insurance for workday they will look at your config and then they will sign off uh, saying that okay these items have um these items have uh, have passed our review and these items are not uh, we we are not going to sign off on these particular items now you can still go live uh, but then if anything breaks in these specific areas it is not our responsibility basically we are not uh, liable for uh, these things not working because you are not following the standard workday uh, configuration methodology there
okay so that is about da reviews don't worry much about the da reviews so it is something that workday does and your leadership will handle that so once the da delivery assurance review is completed and signed off uh, you will get a uh, 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 Pass from work. They say that okay, now you are ready for go live. Now you will select one of the dates, uh, and uh, you will go live with work. Day. So the day you go live, whichever tenant is the gold tenant. So basically, uh, this migration of the data. Let's say uh, all worker data that you put into the employee, um, all the employee data that you move into work day. Uh, that particular tenant is called as the gold. tenant so gold tenant basically is the most updated and the most perfect tenant without any issues any problems or any uh, misconfigurations and on the day of go live this go gold tenant will be converted into production tenant and you will have uh, you will also be given sandbox tenant and implementation tenant and depending upon the uh, customer's budget and requirement they can choose to have more implementation tenants uh, or they will they can also have they will also have sandbox review customer central tenants so that is how the implementation methodology this is more about the implementation technology of work. i mean implement, implementation methodology um, that is followed uh, by workday and by most of the uh, customers uh, across um across the globe any any questions here yeah any i have a quick question yeah sure please go ahead hey uh, okay so can uh, for the uad face rate right? who will be the uh, Testers will will that be the stakeholders? I mean, what yes, is... yes. So the HR partners, the the HR partners in the company, they will be doing the testing. So UAT is uh, uh, completely handled by the customer itself. Um, they will be doing the UAT. There are instances where the consulting company will also help with the UAT, but um, it depends. Again, you know, if the customer wants to do the UAT by themselves and sign off, or if the customer have the ample number of resources they will be conducting the uat by themselves got it and can you please uh, explain the conversion phase once again i uh, yeah. find it <laughs> okay yeah i'll explain Sorry. that no problem no problem uh, any other questions from anyone else so listen uh, the user stories that you explain your voice is your voice is very blurry i cannot really understand what you're saying uh, one minute can you hear me now yeah this is loud better okay no the user stories that you explain mm-hmm. i know scrum masters usually they work with the team and prioritize user stories mm-hmm. but in this case who does that mm, it depends it, it could be a scrum master it could be a solution architect depends upon the project if the project not has not the support analyst no not i mean this asm application support analyst are no, they no. responsible for prioritizing no 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 they don't i mean it depends right i mean uh, if you are like a senior resource let's say uh-huh. you you let's say hypothetically you are going mm-hmm. to join a company as a resource with 5 6 years of experience as a senior work the consultant you okay. might be expected to do it it okay. might be one of That's your roles and responsibility uh, if okay. you are going as a junior consultant i don't i don't mm-hmm. think you are expected or no one is going to ask you to do it because they mm-hmm. they might not think you you your experience is um you 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 are not ready for that kind of a role yet okay, if you are okay. a junior it depends upon okay. it depends upon the 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 seniority and uh, the role that mm-hmm. you play in that particular <clears throat> project Okay. Another question. This is again around the UAT. I know you mentioned sometimes HR they do it <clears throat> by themselves, or there are consultants who would help. Mm-hmm. But are there any, uh, I mean, scenarios where you know if if it is a senior consultant, will he or she be drafting those test scenarios and asking the HR people to test? Yeah, and uh, there okay. will be yeah yeah. So um, some of these test scenarios will be uh, drafted by the HR itself, and these test scenarios have to be drafted by them. Uh, but mm-hmm. most companies, if you are going mm-hmm. into a consulting company, uh, because mm-hmm. they have been doing this from a long time, they will have like a template 
of all mm-hmm. the test scenarios that needs to be executed for uh, mm-hmm. so those are like standard test scenarios and mm-hmm. then depending upon the customer's uh, specific config they will they can also have like a custom test scenarios as well uh, but then mm-hmm. yeah uh, it will be it will be the consultants who will be drafting it and helping uh, the um, helping HR the customer yeah uh, customers with the test scenarios they have to execute themselves so they will have mm-hmm. to test it we will support mm-hmm. them with testing uh, they mm-hmm. will have to test it they will have to identify if there are any issues with the testing and they have to sign off and this is mm-hmm. again uh, one of the reasons that you have a lot of ams around work day because at the time of implementation not all the hrs mm-hmm. will be fully accustomed with uh, how work day works they might they might overlook a few things and they will sign off mm-hmm. on some of these without even yeah. identifying that there is an issue but as in mm-hmm. when they will keep on start using work day on a day to day basis they will come across a lot of these problems again and then mm-hmm. it, it it becomes an entire other project like an ams project saying that okay we have these many issues uh, we need to solve these issues and then it becomes another project so that again that comes as a part of hypercare there will be hypercare okay. phase after the go live mm-hmm. a 2 to 3 months mm-hmm. of hyper care yeah, yeah, phase okay. will be given yeah. by um the companies who implement it and then any anything after that will be part of uh, additional support that needs to be paid for so oh, awesome. that is how yeah. the implementation works so the issues that you find in hyper care uh, i know this is i'm going little ahead but uh, is how who decides like this is going to be a bug fix or a separate project itself Uh, uh it, it both parties will discuss okay if it's a if it's a small bug fix they will fix it if it's like an enhancement saying that hey at the time of design session you said you don't want it now you say you mm-hmm. want it, it it will require these many hours of effort so that is going to be a separate project we will not consider okay. as a part of hypercave uh, these these will be uh, this will all be covered as a part of sow uh okay. when when the customer when they sign the sow all this will be mm-hmm. written that any additional enhancement that is more than these many hours will be mm-hmm. um will be considered as an additional enhancement and it will not be part of the current project and even mm-hmm. when the requirements are signed off uh, there uh-huh. will be there will be certain um uh, you know emails and you know, sign off emails and discussion that happens saying that okay now you are signing off on these requirements this these mm-hmm. this is what we are going to configure anything other than this will be considered as an additional requirement so mm-hmm. companies are very particular about um, at the time of implementation what they are taking like the scope should not increase you know when we are configuring mm-hmm. hey we want this we want this we want this that should not happen mm-hmm. we should okay. not be they cannot keep on increasing the scope and that kind of mm-hmm. happens but all that will mm-hmm. be added into a separate tracker saying that okay this is an issue log this is a future yeah. improve wave and it might be a separate mm-hmm. project and that's how companies make money right they they need yes. to keep on adding work so that they can yeah. add those consulting hours all right so application <laughs> analyst will they be also involved right from the beginning when scope is finalized or do they come in the last when everything sow is finalized it depends again on your seniority if you are an architect okay. you will be involved from the very beginning uh, from mm-hmm. the design from the discussions about how many how many resources that you need to staff on this project you might be involved as a, at an architect level you might be involved from there at my level i i am usually involved in from the those from that phase you know uh, from the initial discussion where the very first discussion from the sales call i will be involved uh, you know okay. they are deciding that should they go with my company the company that i am working for to implement work day uh, from mm-hmm. that phase if you are an architect level you will be involved and once the requirements are confirmed at that time there will be mid level consultants will be uh, on board into the project they are not required until then so okay. it depends upon the seniority depends upon the requirement of the project uh, when to involve whom again uh, also budget plays a role if the customer mm-hmm. has a fixed budget or a a very stringent budget so we need to implement the project within that particular budget so we will be very cognizant around how many employees we on board at what phase at what time we need how many employees we we just need some people for testing we will only on board them during testing after testing is completed we will off board them so okay okay that's all i thank you so much cool
all right uh coming to the conversions right so conversions is basically um so there is setup data one is setup data one is employee data i hope you you know the difference between the setup data and employee data right mm, no actually so okay. setup data is something that we are uh, implementing on the employee data is the actual data setup data mm -hmm. is uh, the configuration like for example um yeah. let's say i'm just going to say job profile just go based on the literal meaning of a job profile it says like a uh, a profile um, a job description then then in this company there are 100 different job profiles like manager you have accountant you have admin like 100 different job profiles this is the setup data you have uh, 100 cost centers you have 100 companies uh, legal legal entities you have uh, 300 locations you have these many blah 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 whatever this is all that comes under setup data now employee data is that there is this employee uh, who is assigned this particular job profile who is who is assigned a specific cost center a specific legal entity is from a specific location so this employee will be using may not be using entire thing but one part of the setup data that one job profile one location one company all this is employee data basically this employees information this is the employee this is the day when this employee was hired this was this is the compensation that the employee is currently getting this is the manager of that employee this is the role of that employee okay all this is employee data now once the setup is completed you also have to uh, start moving the employee data into work there right so that is the point when we do the conversions so basically if you have like 10000 employees you need to move those 10000 employees into work there from their legacy system but before you move that into work that you need to set up the system in a way that it should work uh, in, a, in, a, in a customized way for the customer like based on their requirement you first set up the system then you start hiring the employees into the system so basically in this case if they if they are already using a workday system you will be moving uh, uh the employee data from that third party system or the legacy system into the workday system and that process is called as conversions Good. <laughs> All right. Um, Thank you. Any any other questions? Okay. So that covers our workday fundamentals. So now you you have some fundamental understanding of what is workday as a product. <clears throat> what are some of the aspects and uh, some of the tenant details, like what is a tenant, uh, what is the implementation methodology, you know, some basics you understand. Now, starting tomorrow, we will be getting into the configurations of Workday. We'll speak about, and um, as from, for a, as a part of the core HCM uh, concept, we'll be discussing uh, part of HCM, like uh, we'll see how the navigation works, what are some of the navigation topics. We did touch upon some of these like notifications, uh, worklets, uh, bulk approvals inbox, these items we did touch upon, uh, but I will again go into some more details about these concepts. And then we'll start looking at uh, some of the dashboards and what are some of the search functionalities, the landing page config. So we'll, we'll look into some of these details and then we'll start configuring the organizations in Workday. So basically how to set up the organization structure. So once you get a org structure from your uh, customer, how will you set up that particular hierarchy within the Workday? And once you set up that hierarchy, how will you um, uh, start hiring employees into that? How does that business process of hiring an employee looks like in Workday, the jobs, what are different jobs? What are different positions? Uh, what is the compensation configuration? Like how will you define the compensation structure uh, in Workday and how you can assign that particular compensation to different employees? And uh, and what are some of the features available uh, within the, the compensation? And then uh, we will also talk about the configurable security. Um, here, although it says unit six is hiring workers, I will be discussing about hiring employees way uh, around and like unit one. So I, I will be discussing all these topics uh, during the course of the next few weeks. Uh, however, I might sometime mix and match uh, the, the, um, um, 
what can i say the way i discuss this might i, I might not be following the exact same uh, uh, linear way of doing it i will be touching upon different topics um, uh, when as and when required so if there is a, if i need to explain you about certain security group or certain security config at the time of setting up the organizations i might deviate into security a little bit so that you have a better understanding of why i'm doing a particular config so i don't want you to wait uh, until unit 8 to be completed to understand something that i did in unit 1 you will you'll forget it by then so i i will be following my a uh, bit of my own methodology when i am uh, discussing these topics and when i'm explaining these different concepts so that uh, you have an overall holistic understanding of workday rather than just i just don't, i just don't want to knock off one topic 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 i don't want to do it i want to give you like an overall understanding of uh, how every single config and every single set of fits together because workday is not very linear if you look at some other erps uh, if i if i take an example like sap sap is kind of linear uh, and i have some experience with sap payroll so if you are going to set up payroll you have like a step by step step by step process that you will follow first you will set up this then this then this then this and then finally you will so everything builds upon the previous thing but it is not in the case of workday workday is like a uh, it's like a circle so when i say it's like a circle it's like um, you know it it's like this uh, you you have to understand the entire thing to understand how it all works uh, whereas in sap you will be doing it this way like you first understand this and then this and then you move to this and then you move to this but workday is like this so you might be understanding this particular part first and then this particular part and this particular part so you need you need a overall understanding of how different things fit together like this only then you will be able to understand okay this this now this makes sense so if i go in this particular model when i'm explaining workday to you you might you might understand this particular thing but you don't understand how this fits with this you don't know how it fits so i want i don't want that to happen when i'm discussing things so i might be touching upon a lot of topics when i'm discussing things uh, so that you get an overall understanding of every single topic uh, when i'm explaining that to you all right uh, that's it for today's session uh, we will meet tomorrow again same time uh, and we'll go through uh, the core at same concepts uh, tomorrow do you have any other questions that you might want to ask me? I'm assuming this is not related to today's class, but just curious to know, do you have any other batch which you are, you know, taking? Any other batch? Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I, I want you to be... Right? Do you have morning batch? Can you elaborate? Your, your voice is very hazy. I can barely hear you. Do I have an idea or any other batch that I'm taking? One second. Yes, you said. Now I can understand you, Rubina. Here, talk. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. No, just wanted to know. You have this evening batch, right? Do you have any morning batch also? Uh, this is Your my batch. this is my morning batch. Oh, uh, for me it is evening. Uh huh. Like, I don't. Do you have know. any evening batch? No, 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 no. My days are like super packed. Uh, this okay. is something that uh, I am doing just because a look. Uh, I am a good friend of Alok, so Alok asked me to take these batches. I'm okay. a very busy person. I only have no two hours that's in a okay. day that I can mm -hmm. spare for this. No, that's okay. That's okay. I'll just attend this class. Yeah, Your sure. session was, was very informative, very engaging. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Inzamam, you raise your hand. No, I think it was from. Yeah, yeah. Once, once you guys, uh, once you ask a question, you raise your hand so that I know that you're you have a question. But then, once you once you clarified your doubt, you can lower your hand so that. Uh, okay. All right then. Uh, we'll talk tomorrow then. Uh, thank you everyone. Have a good rest of your day, rest of your night. We'll talk tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. I'm going to be working with